Hey cool worders, it's David. Have you ever wondered how long our civilization might last for? Will we destroy ourselves in a nuclear war, maybe next week? Or maybe we will last for millions of years and eventually colonize the entire galaxy? This question touches on one of the great unknowns in astronomy, which is how many technological civilizations are there right now in our Milky Way galaxy? If civilizations last for just a few hundred years, then the chances of two happening to coexist at the same time is obviously less likely. If, on the other hand, civilizations last for millions of years, then it becomes kind of odd that we don't see any evidence for them in our own Milky Way galaxy. Now, there is a statistical trick to estimate the longevity of at least our civilization using what's called the doomsday argument. Championed by numerous academics, including Brandon Carter, Richard Gott, Beck Nielsen, and John Leslie, the whole thing centers upon the principle of mediocrity, which is actually something we use all the time. For example, let's say you're trying to guess what blood type you are. There are actually eight possibilities, but three quarters of all people in the United States belong to just two types, A positive and O positive. So if you knew nothing else, you would probably reasonably guess that you are most likely to be one of those two types. Now let's extend this principle to another example. Let's take an urn and start filling it with balls. The first ball placed into the urn has the number one written on it and the second ball has the number two written on it, and so on and so on. So let's imagine that your friend blindfolds you, they go ahead and fill up this urn full of balls and they shake it up, and then they say to you, pick out one random ball, look at what the number is on that ball, and then try to guess how many balls you think in total I put into the urn. So let's suppose that you pick out a ball number 10, which means it was the 10th ball which was put into that urn. Now before picking out that ball, you had no idea how many balls could be in that urn. It could be a few, it could be a thousand, it could be a billion. It's a very big urn. But now that you have picked out the ball number 10, you can actually say two things. One, there has to be at least 10 balls in that urn, or how could you pick out number 10? And two, there are probably not billions of balls in that urn. I mean, think about it. How likely is it that you would pick out one of the first 10 balls out of a billion? Well, it's one in a hundred million, which is about the odds of winning the lottery. Likewise, it's very unlikely that you picked out one of the very last balls. So you would probably reason that there are more than 10 balls, but probably less than a billion balls. Astrophysicist Richard Gott famously used this argument to estimate the longevity of the Berlin Wall when he visited it back in 1969. So he imagined each of those balls in the urn as basically being a year. So technically what he's doing there, he's using what we'd call a reference class of time. Gott imagined splitting the wall's lifetime up into four even segments, each representing 25% of the total lifetime. Gott reasoned that there was a 50% chance he was seeing the wall in those middle two quarters using the principle of mediocrity. If he was at the start of the second quarter, then the wall would only last for three times longer than it had done already. On the other hand, if he was at the end of the third quarter, then the wall would last for one third as long as it had done already. Therefore, he estimated a 50% confidence that the wall would last for between one third to three times longer than it was at that time, which was eight years old. So he estimated that the Berlin Wall would likely come down sometime between 1972 and 1993. And indeed, that's what happened. In 1989, the Berlin Wall came down. By the way, in that same year, Gott actually also visited Stonehenge, a 4,000 year old structure, and estimated that it should last, using the same logic, sometime between 3,300 AD and 14,000 AD. So, you know, so far so good. Similar logic was also used by Allied statisticians during the Second World War to use serial numbers on German tanks to estimate the total number of German tanks that would ever be produced, and they had some reasonably accurate estimates. So what happens when we use this argument and turn it on ourselves to estimate how long will our civilization last for? Astronomer Fergus Simpson recently used an updated Bayesian version of this argument and switched the reference class from years to observers to forecast our demise. I'm putting a link down below for the paper. It's a very accessible read, actually, and I encourage you to have a look. On the basis that roughly 100 billion human beings have ever lived, he was able to estimate that our chances of survival in the short term are roughly one in 500 per year. That's kind of grim, right? It means we're unlikely to live past the next millennium. Now, the doomsday argument definitely does court controversy. For example, if you change the reference class from people to 
years, then you get a different answer. If you start counting human beings from the beginnings of civilization rather than the beginnings of Homo sapiens, then you also get a different answer. And if you imagine that future human beings will be cyborgs or something with completely different experiences of what it even means to be alive, then we are not typical observers thereby invalidating the principle of mediocrity. Nevertheless, the argument makes some really compelling points. And if you buy into it, it means that the probability of us becoming a civilization spanning trillions of individuals across thousands of worlds in the galaxy is extremely unlikely. But whilst this might be the fate of most rolls of the dice, it doesn't have to be our fate. We can be special. The future is not written, and our destiny lies in our own hands. If humanity can transition to an era of world peace, combat climate change, and fend off external threats of extinction, then we can treat the doomsday argument as a warning, as a call to action. Let's choose to beat the odds. So thank you so much for watching this video, everybody. If you like this video and you want to get more like it, then do make sure you click the subscribe button down below. I really want to hear what you guys think about the doomsday argument. Let me know in the comments below whether you buy into this. But until next time, stay thoughtful and stay curious. Astronomer Fergus Simpson recently... Uh, but although probably... <laughs>